In today's video, we're going to look at how three plant hormones, auxin, gibberellin, and ethene, can be used commercially to bring about changes in plants. Let's start with auxins, which are a type of growth hormone. Because they stimulate plants to grow, if we purposely add auxins to plant cells, we can stimulate growth. For example, if we had a collection of plant cells in a tissue culture, we could grow lots of plant clones by using a growth medium that contains auxin, in addition to the other nutrients that the plants would need. The same process works with cuttings, which are small sections of a plant that are being cut off, like the end of a branch with a few leaves. If we place these in soil by themselves, they normally won't do anything. But if we add rooting powder, which contains auxin, then they'll produce roots and start to grow into a new plant. The final use of auxins is that we can use them to kill weeds. This might sound a bit counterintuitive, as auxins stimulate growth. But basically, if you add enough of them, it can completely disrupt a plant's growth patterns, which causes it to die. Luckily for us, most weeds are a type of plant called broad-leaved plants, whereas most commercial plants, like cereals, are narrow-leaved. This means that we can develop selective weed killers, that we can spray everywhere, but that only kill the broad-leaved weeds. Next up, we have gibberellin, which also has three main uses. Controlling dormancy, inducing flowering, and growing larger fruit. If you think of a seed sitting in the soil, it won't germinate and start growing until the conditions are just right. For example, the right levels of warmth, oxygen, and water. And we call this period before growth starts dormancy. By exposing the seeds to gibberellin though, farmers can induce germination at times of the year when it wouldn't normally happen. This means they can grow multiple crops per year, and also ensure that all the plants start growing at the same time. The same thing works for inducing flowering. Even though flowering normally requires certain conditions to start, gibberellin can induce it on demand and also encourage plants to make more flowers, or bigger flowers. The final use is growing larger fruit. This is particularly useful with seedless varieties of fruit, which naturally don't grow as large as their seeded relatives. But by giving them gibberellin, we can make sure that their fruits grow well. The last hormone we need to look at is ethene which is used to stimulate the ripening of fruit. If you've ever noticed how much more quickly some fruit ripens than others, you can probably understand how useful it is to be able to control the ripening process. It's even more important when you consider that most of our fruit is shipped for weeks across the world before it gets to us. By purposely picking the fruit before it's ripe, we have enough time to transport it to where it needs to go. And once it's there, we can expose it to ethene so that it quickly ripens and is ready for sale. Most plants naturally produce their own ethene, and we often block its effects while we're transporting it so that it doesn't ripen too early. At the cellular level, ethene works by stimulating an enzyme that causes the fruit to ripen. Anyways, that's everything for this video. So hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again soon.